So hello and welcome to the podcast. My name is Aaron Beaver and man, I am really, really excited about today's topic. I have been sitting on this for many, many years. This is honestly one of the backbone fundamental things that drives me and the Suffer Club. So I'm just going to get right into it because I'm, I'm really, really excited about this one. So when I was a child, I was terrified of the dark. Not just afraid of the dark, terrified. I think a lot of kids are afraid of the dark. Mine was a paralyzing fear. We had this shed behind our house when I was a kid that I thought was a quarter of a mile away, like deep into the woods. And my dad would ask me to go get stuff out of it. And I would probably have taken a spanking versus go out to that building. Yeah, like I was terrified. Only to realize a few months ago when I drove to that old house that it was only like 20 feet behind the house. What a wimp. Like seriously. So as I... As I try to overcome my fear of the dark, when I was 30 years old, I decided I'm going to go camping by myself at Crowder's Mountain State Park. See, I believe that there are some limits and boundaries that need to be pushed, and this was one of those in my life that needed to be pushed out of the way. So I show up to Crowder's Mountain State Park on a Thursday to go camping by myself. So I go into the park ranger hoping that someone else had signed up for a camp spot only to find that there is nobody. It is going to be me by myself. So I hurry to my campsite. I set it up only to realize that I, in my hurriness, I forgot the most important thing for someone that is terrified of the dark. I forgot a flashlight. Yeah. So I hurry real quick and start a fire and then set up my campsite because I'm terrified of the dark, even at this moment. So as the night comes and my camp is roaring, this is where everything changes. It starts to rain. <laughs> like the guy who's afraid of the dark is about to lose his only thing that generates light. And so as I hurry quickly get in my tent because it is not just drizzling. It is like downpouring. I zip up my tent and I kind of hunker down for the night because it's just going to be a long one. My fire goes out very, very quickly because of the amount of rain. And shortly after, probably about an hour to two hours after I've like laid in the tent and the fire has gone out, the rain stops. But as the rain stops, my senses start to go crazy. Like I start to hear something in the woods, and whatever is in the woods is making this ridiculously loud noise. Like Sasquatch is about to set his foot on my campsite. So I'm like sitting in there. My mind is running crazy. I am terrified of the dark still at this moment. I'm in a dark tent with no campfire. It's just rained. Everything is wet. It is miserable, but this is where this is where it really this is where it really changes. This is where it gets exciting. I unzip the tent and I realize I can see into the woods. See, your eyes do this unique thing where they dilate in the dark. See, your your pupil starts to expand and light, let whatever light is out there, any reflections of light, anything, it allows that to hit your eye sensor and you're able to see in the dark. You're able to see objects in the dark. You may not be able to see like you can right now, but you can see in the dark. And so as I unzip the tent, I can now see into the woods and I realize that that thing making a noise in the woods is a god dang squirrel. And there ain't nobody afraid of a squirrel. And so I'm like, I'm like laughing in the tent because I'm like, I'm thinking I'm dying. Like I am about, like my end is coming. Okay, if I'm going to be killed by Sasquatch and they're going to find me, how is this going to go out? Like, right? Like how is this going to end? And it's a squirrel. 
And so there were two things that night that I want you to take away. One, we fear the unknown. See, I had already deemed that Sasquatch was in the woods and he was going to eat me alive. But in reality, I just feared what I didn't know. See, a lot of us fear the unknown. We fear other people because we don't know them. We fear other cultures because we don't know them. We fear other things because we don't know them. See, a lot of times we fear pushing ourselves to a limit because we don't know what will happen. Okay, Aaron, if I push myself harder in running, what happens if I get injured? Well, that is a rea- that is could be a possible reality. But it could also be that you set your PR and you've open a whole new parameter to realize your body can push itself way beyond what you thought, right? But we fear the unknown. What happens if I fail? Well, when you fail, then we'll come across that bridge. But you can't just think, well, what happens if I fail? Because you've never failed. Now, some of you have failed and you know what it feels like. And so you don't want to go back to that. But a lot of us haven't really failed. We failed because we haven't tried. We haven't failed because we really failed. But we're afraid of the unknown. So the second thing was, the longer I stay in the dark, the more I can see the objects in the dark. See, for me, I put myself in a lot of dark situations because the more comfortable I can get in that dark situation... The more relaxed I can get, the quicker my eyes will dilate and I will be able to see the objects in the room that are restricting me from the exit of the darkness. See, I don't want you to get that I am trying to, I want you to get comfortable in the dark. I want you to get comfortable in suffering. That is not the case. It's just, I want you to put yourself there so that way you can get yourself out in another season. See, I put myself in a lot of dark situations in my training because when it comes down to crunch time, when I'm in a race or I'm doing something where I've got to push myself, I want to know that dark room when I go into it. When my body starts to bonk, I want to know that darkness the moment it hits. I want to know how to get out of it. I've been in a physical bonk enough that I know how to get out of it. I know that 99% of the time, I can get out of it with food. I've been in that emotional bonk. I've been in that emotional dark hole that you're just like, there's no way I can finish this. And for me, my get out of that one really quick is my kids. That one for me, I can get out like almost immediately with my kids, with thinking about my kids. Because I will push myself farther than I ever thought I could for my kids. It's just my easy way out. That's my ace in the hole. See, I have put myself in there long enough that I have tried different things that get me out. And I have just worked out a solution to getting myself out of 90% of the dark holes. See, a lot of times getting yourself in the dark hole is not necessarily trying to figure a way out. It's just what's in that dark room, right? What's stopping you from the exit? What's the furniture in that dark room? You ever got up in the middle of the night and like stub your toe on a stupid chair and you're like, like if the light was on, you'd have missed it, right? And that's what happens in the dark. We go into these dark seasons and we're like, boom, we hit a chair and we're like, mother, our toes bleeding and we're like, go crazy. But it's because our eyes haven't dilated and we can't see the objects in the room. See, our eyes do the opposite when we're afraid. See, when people get afraid, their vision narrows and their eyes contract, limiting the light to their pupil, limiting the light through their pupil into their sensor of their eye. 
And so most of the times when you get in that dark room, the first thing you need to do is relax yourself. See, I guarantee you if I would have relaxed myself much earlier at that camping trip, everything would have been different. But there was a purpose. Like it needed to rain so that it would be dark and I would overcome my fear. See, now I don't have a fear of the dark. I honestly don't. One of my most enjoyable moments is mountain biking in the dark by myself. I love it. It's just a reminder of how far I've pushed myself, of what I have overcome. See, for me, I want you to know that it's not about being comfortable in the dark. That is not at all what we want you to do. We don't want you to be comfortable. We want you to just put yourself in there because at some point in time in life, it's going to be dark. You're going to be dealt a card, a hand that you are not prepared to deal with and is going to put you in a dark season. See, I came through a very dark season in my life a few years back. I promised myself I would never go back there. And one of the ways that I keep myself from that dark mental space is to put myself in dark parameters where I can control them because at any moment in a run, I can sit my butt on the ground, right? And somebody can come get me. But in life, you can't sit your butt on the ground. Your friends are relying on you. Your family is relying on you. Your kids are relying on you. Wife, husband, somebody's relying on you. And the most important, you are relying on you. And you've got to figure out what do I do to get myself out of the situation. So for me, I have things in my life to get me out of life dark seasons. So for me, I know that there are five things that I have wrote down that are automatic wins for me. They're automatic morale boosters for me. They're automatic confidence boosters in me. They're automatic things that I am proud of myself for doing. And so when I'm having a bad day, oh, dang it, I will clear every schedule. I will stop what I'm doing and go do one of those things so that I can feel good about myself because that's the easiest way for me to get out of that rut, out of that season. So I work really, really hard on mental health. I know that it's probably, it's the thing that will last with me longer than anything else. See, I know at some point in time, my physical abilities will fade, but my mental strength, it won't. It'll actually get stronger. That's why we push for mental health so strong at the Suffer Club. Because we know that if you can be mentally strong, you'll do things that you never thought you could do physically because there's just a whole nother level in your body, in your mind, that most of us aren't willing to tap. So look, I hope you have enjoyed this. Remember, it's only a dang squirrel in the woods. It ain't Sasquatch. And I hope, I really, really hope that you grasp this, this idea. If you want to try this yourself, go to a dark room Go outside, cover your eyes for 30 seconds to a minute, and you will start to see the objects in the dark. Now look, don't walk, okay? Like if you're in a dark room, just stay still. Just like stand under the light and turn it off and then turn it back on. I don't want to hear nobody getting injured, okay? That's not what we're about. But look, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like, share it. And if you really enjoyed it, if there was something that touched you or impacted you, hey, shoot us a comment. We would love to hear uh, that it's beneficial. Thanks to those that have already reached out. And we will see you again really, really soon. Adios.